Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the video. It's your boy, your calamari in chief, the Daytona dude, Yami Noob. We're talking about essential tips for sport bike riders, new sport bike riders specifically. This is Yami Noob bread and butter, baby. We've tried to bring in content from the other segments of motorcycling, like cruisers or dual sports, but the analytics do not lie. You guys are here for sport bike content and sport bike content only. I must give the people what they want. So without further ado, here's some essential tips for new sport bike riders. One of the most immediate differences you'll find when riding a sport bike compared to a standard bike or a cruiser is the necessary body positioning. While a beginner sport bike is not as committed as a dedicated super sport, it's still going to be more aggressive than what you would find on a cruiser. Compared to the casual Honda Rebel you rode in your MSF course, swinging a leg over a Ninja 400 is going to make you feel like Valentino Rossi. On a sport bike, your foot pegs are going to be mounted further back and you have clip-on handlebars attached directly to the fork tube which will force you to be leaned over on the bike. This riding position poses lots of advantages for sporting and aggressive riding, allowing the rider for a better center of gravity, less aerodynamic drag, and better maneuverability during turns. But before you take advantage of a committed riding position, you must first become accustomed to controlling the bike in this way. Sport bike posture is far more athletic riding style than the gynecological position found on many cruisers. One of the best things you can do as a new sport bike rider is start holding yourself up in a position by gripping the tank with your knees. Holding yourself up like this has many advantages beyond preventing the gonads from being smashed in the gas tank under hard deceleration. Gripping the tank with your knees will also keep your body weight off of your hands, which will allow for more precise control over your throttle. Once you're used to holding onto the tank, you should pay mind to how you position your feet on the bike. When riding a sport bike, it can be advantageous to ride with the balls of your feet on the foot pegs in certain situations. If you're riding aggressively, you will be more easily able to adjust your body weight when leaning from side to side, and you can access the controls a little bit better too. You can also clear your feet from the clearance of when you're going on lean. If you're leaning far into corners and you have those little duck feet, you're going to drag your toes. Keeping your foot back and away from the rear brake pedal is also a good habit for new riders to develop, as a lack of experience can cause new riders to inadvertently drag their brake when it's not necessary or rely on it too heavily when a majority of the stopping power comes from the front. All in all, having your body in the right position on a sport bike is a great start for learning how to control your bike. One of the biggest things any new rider needs to tackle is learning how to master throttle control. Throttle input is the greatest factor that determines how your motorcycle is going to behave. It of course determines your speed, but it also impacts everything from traction to overall stability. In the most basic sense, controlling throttle involves smooth and predictable inputs. You don't want to be jerky in your inputs. Too much throttle too quickly and you risk losing traction. Going off the throttle too quickly can cause aggressive engine braking that you may not be prepared for. The severity in these scenarios are exacerbated during curves where the risk of losing traction is intensified. New riders often make the mistake of grabbing onto the throttle like the end of a baseball bat. When you're new to two wheels and experiencing a lot of nerves on your first rides, you're likely to be too stiff and rigid in your grip. To maximize throttle control, you must make a lighter grip and be looser on the controls. That's helpful to have your elbows out and grabbing onto the throttle with your hand at an inward angle and open the throttle as if you're twisting a screwdriver. This makes it a lot easier to progressively add more or less throttle compared to grabbing it ham-fistedly when your options are limited to on and off. We're going to get into this topic later in the video when it comes to braking, but the general rule of thumb is the more upright your motorcycle is, the more throttle you progressively add on. Think of it like a string attached to the throttle. As you lean down, throttle input should be coming off, and as you come up on the bike, throttle input should be be adding. Think of it as a coordination between leaning in, throttle off, leaning up, throttle on. Make sense? Good. One of the most important things that must be stressed to a new rider is the importance of proper gear. Of course, you want full kit riding gear for yourself, but there's also the gear that you should equip on your bike. When you're a new rider starting out, the last thing you want to do is get lost or end up on a busy road you're unprepared for. To mitigate this, it is imperative to use a GPS while on your bike. And the best way to do this is by using a Rockform mount. Rockform is an industry leader in cell phone accessories for motorcycling. Their cases are rugged and durable and attached seamlessly to a handlebar or stem mount. I use it all the time on my desert sled. And just because these cases are durable doesn't mean they're lacking in creature comforts. They have incredibly strong magnets that permit wireless charging and you can chuck them on a tool chest or a fridge or wherever else you need to. So to kind of make sure phone even better. As I pursue more sport touring rides, having a rock form phone case and mount has become an essential piece on my bike. If you've ever gotten lost and had to pull off into a gas station to check the map on your phone, quit kidding yourself and just get a rock form case and handlebar mount. If you use the code YN25 at checkout, you'll receive 25% off of your order. Again, hit that link in the description and use the code YN25 for 25% off. Big thanks to Rockform for the support and let's get back to learning some more. It is equally as important for new sport brake riders to understand how to maximize the efficacy of their braking. While it's 
it's important to not overtly rely on the rear brake, using it appropriately in conjunction with the front brake will aid in your stopping power. It's also important to master progressive braking. You don't want to go from 0 to 100 on your brake lever as that is an almost guaranteed way to lock up and send the wheel sliding or have the ABS fairy godmother be able to intervene. Always avoid grabbing the brakes suddenly or abruptly. You have to practice progressive braking, which involves applying the brakes gradually and increasing the pressure as needed. The Yamaha Champ School guys are often apt to say that a tire will take a tremendous amount of load, but it won't take it abruptly. So you have to load up the front and then add on brake pressure. Understanding how to use your brakes is going to be the number one thing you need to learn how to ride because you can prevent accidents that way. It's really easy to pile on speed. Anybody can twist open the throttle, but being a master on the brakes requires practice, diligence, and actually knowing how to ride. Trail braking in the corners is going to be your best friend. You have to understand that the front brake is more effective in stopping the motorcycle. Use a controlled and firm squeeze on the front brake lever, applying increasing pressure as you slow down. As a new rider, you should absolutely carve out time for yourself to practice your braking. As you get more comfortable with taking the brakes into a turn, you're going to realize that you can carry very light brake pressure into a corner and allow yourself to point the bike in the way it needs to go. Being cautious entering corners while being lightly on the brake is a way more effective way to enter corners than just sending it on the gas because when your bike is on throttle, it wants to go wide. Also, if you're trailing into corners, you're going to be able to tighten up the radius as much as you need to, and you won't be scared when the corner suddenly decreases in radius if you're already carrying trail brake pressure. You should go to a safe space like a parking lot or a quiet street, and you can practice testing the threshold of your brakes at slower speed and gain an understanding of the optimal amount of pressure to apply to your lever. If you're new to riding sport bikes or just motorcycles in general, just going out once a week and practicing your braking is going to yield so many dividends for you. Seriously, practice your braking. It's really going to help you. When you get in some seat time on your motorcycle, you realize that the bike behaves very differently when riding at slow speeds and at higher speeds. You'll also begin to notice that adjusting your body position during each of these scenarios can help improve your bike's ability and responsiveness. When making tight turns at slow speeds, it can be very helpful to count your weight by sliding over to the side of the seat that's not going to the turn and leading your weight opposite in the direction your bike is turning. Conversely, when going at higher speeds, you'll want to lean in the same direction of the bike. Lower your inside arm, the arm on the side of the turn, and allow your body to lean with the bike. Lower the inside of your shoulder slightly towards the inside of the turn as well. This combined with lowering your inside arm helps lean the bike into the turn as well. You don't need to overdo this. Some guys think that when you're riding the street, you need to go all Valentino Rossi MotoGP mode, but racers are practicing very, very high levels of riding and they need to extract maximum performance from your bike. If you just slide half a cheek off during your street rides and just get your body over a little bit, you're doing your bike a service because you're reducing the angle of lean and it feels a little bit better. Counterweighting and slow speed turns is great and you should always do that. It makes the whole thing a lot easier. You have to shift your weight to the inside of a turn while keeping your body centered over the bike. This dynamic weight distribution enhances the motorcycle stability. And when turning at high speeds, you'll also use counter steering, not to be confused with counter weight Weighting counter steering as a result of motorcycles gyroscopic forces, which as a quick reminder is the front wheel, the rear wheel, and the crank. If you want to go right, you simply push on your right handlebar. You're essentially turning opposite the direction you want to go. Once you're riding, you can practice this easily. Going around 30 miles per hour, push your handlebars in either direction and you'll see how your bike kind of falls over and responds and it should start to make sense to you. Again, while body position is important, I can't stress to you guys enough that it is not the most important thing when you're learning how to ride on the street. Proper throttle and braking inputs are going to be the most important thing. Line selection as well. You want to make sure you're not going over to the middle of the road, oil spills, gravel, that sort of thing. Taking a safe and appropriate line through corners is definitely going to be way better than learning how to drag your elbow. A really good piece of advice for new riders, sport bike riders in particular, is to be skeptical of group rides. When riding with other people, it can be really easy to try to keep up with more experienced riders where you wind up in situations your skill set isn't prepared for. As a new rider, it is imperative that you ride at your own pace that correlates with your skill level and familiarity of certain roads. Plenty of people have gotten themselves into bad situations that could have been avoided had they been not chasing down the group's giga chat on their local twisty roads. It is also worth mentioning that it is not recommended to saddle up next to a complete stranger who just happens to be riding in the same place as you. While many people enjoy motorcycling for the brotherhood, a lot of people like to ride alone, myself included. Having some weird baby squid and Ninja 400 riding their coattails is not always appreciated. So ride your own ride, don't ride with big groups in unfamiliar areas, and don't bother some random elder squids that you encounter on the road. Unless, of course, you pull off and you guys chat and you decide to mutually ride together and you like the vibe, that's okay, but yeah. 
tailgating someone on a local twisty road, not a good way to make friends. As a new rider, it's important to understand the significance that your own mental clarity and focus have on your riding. Motorcycling can be mentally taxing as it is physically demanding, especially to a new rider. It requires a clear head to oversee all the necessary operations on a bike, while also being aware of your own surroundings, potential hazards, and paying mind to the clueless car drivers on the road. That being said, sometimes that means you have to make the decision on whether or not you're truly up for riding on a given day. If you've got a lot on your plate and you're not feeling like you have it in you, don't feel bad about passing on a ride. You'll have plenty of other chances to get out there on a long and fruitful riding career. You got years ahead of you, so there's no sense in taking unnecessary risks just because you feel like you should. On the plus side, as you become a more experienced rider with highly honed skills and good habits, it becomes way easier to get in the proper mindset at a moment's notice. And oftentimes, swinging a leg over a bike will immediately put you in that state of focus that somehow otherwise eludes you in your daily life. But still, as a new rider, you gotta recognize the appreciate the mental side of riding. A big advantage that a sport bike has over a typical bike like a cruiser is the expanse of the rev range. A high revving sport bike provides you a broader spread of power and engine speeds to play with, especially more street oriented bikes with a greater spread of usable power. An essential tip for sport bike riders is to really understand to keep your bike in the power band, knowing what part of the rev range makes the most appropriate amount of power for a given scenario. Most high revving engines will make most of their power at the top end of the range, which is great if you're on a straight road somewhere. But if you're taking tight turns or in an urban area, it probably makes sense to be in a slightly higher gear with lower revs so your throttle isn't so sensitive. But at the same time, you don't want to lug your engine around and be sixth gear while you're rolling around in urban conditions. Sport bikes are meant to rev. You are not hurting your bike by keeping it up in the rev range. That's what they're designed to do. In this scenario where you're lugging it around, your bike's just not going to make any power and it's not going to be as responsive to moving, but also prolonged lugging of an engine can be as detrimental as repeated redline. Being familiarized with your bike's power band will help you provide smooth and predictable power at any speeds and as well aid in the downshifting and rev matching. Rev matching is when you blip the throttle and bring the engine RPM back up before downshifting to the engine speed is raised in preparation for the lower gear. This will allow for smoother downshifts, prevent the risk of jerking or locking up the back wheel should you downshift too aggressively. Knowing how your motorcycle makes power and being able to take full advantage of it in varying scenarios will not only make you a better rider, but also provide a more enjoyable experience as you become fully in tune with your machine. Outside of what's already been mentioned, of course, it is worth mentioning to invest in proper riding gear, learn how to mitigate risk on the road, and start on a motorcycle that's appropriate for your skill level and don't rely too heavily on electronic rider aids. Without a doubt, the best investment you can make as a new rider is not only in gas and tires so you can spend seat time learning, it's practice and courses. I highly recommend investing in advanced rider courses because I truly feel that the United States doesn't provide proper riding education in the MSF for riders. There's so much more to learn and there's so much more to gain. So taking a thousand, two thousand bucks, whatever it is, and investing in proper riding courses is going to yield way more dividends than buying a loud flashy exhaust for your motorcycle. Learn how to give your bike the proper inputs for throttle and brakes and be cognizant of how your body positions and movements are reflected in your bike's maneuverability. Becoming a good rider is about understanding your bike's needs and providing them accordingly, bridging the gap between man and motorcycle. Master that and you will have a great experience. Thanks for watching till the end. I'll catch you later. Fact, traveling at 50 miles per hour, a car uses half its fuel to overcome wind resistance. Goodbye. Keep watching Yammy Noob.